Hello, my name is Simeon Neil Asher, and the trigger point of the week this week, we're going to be covering runner's knee. Now, runner's knee is a pretty common condition. It's actually, sadly, the cause of a, a problem that stops runners uh, from being active. And another name for it is patellofemoral pain syndrome. So I thought what we'd do is we'd just explore a little bit about it. Now, the, the um, runner's knee really comes from... A, problem where the patella or the back of the kneecap rubs on the surface of the femur. Now the, the cartilage at the back of the kneecap is very thick uh, and that joint is under a tremendous amount of load and the main muscles which are pulling on the kneecap are the quadriceps muscles or the four quads which is the, the rectus femoris, quadriceps, uh, vastus lateralis, medialis and then the deeper uh, intermediate sort of uh, quads. So all of those muscles come together and pull on the kneecap. Now um, in terms of trigger points, the, there are several muscles uh, that we're going to explore today, including the hamstrings, gluteus maximus, gluteus, uh, the iliotibial band, popliteus as well. I like looking at popliteus when it comes to knee problems, the quads uh, and, uh, and as well. So, so we're going to put those together. In general, uh, I find that runner's knee is often related to hamstring problems as well as potentially quad problems and that's because the hamstring is involved in deceleration during running as well. Uh, also a great big proportion of gluteus maximus muscle inserts into the iliotibial band and actually down into the knee itself. So they're the kind of muscles that we're going to look at for runner's knee. Now in terms of symptoms, uh, the main symptoms are pain, pain around the kneecap, sometimes a snapping knee, a giving way of the knee, definitely crunching, crunching symptoms as people come up and down, sometimes swelling, um, pain after prolonged sitting, um, and also pain going up and down stairs or up and down hills. But normally the pain is located around the kneecap. Um, so they're the main uh, pain on squatting, pain on sort of deep squats. So, so kneecap pain, pain on running, pain around the outside or sometimes even the inside, uh, all of those are symptoms of runner's knee. So who's prone to runner's knee? Well, generally, um, women are more likely to get it than men. Um, and usually it's younger people in their teens. So younger teenage runners, also like the weekend warriors, the people that um, go and run only on the weekends because tendons generally don't like rapid change. They, they don't like to be uh, go from extremes. Um, more than a 5% sudden eccentric load can actually rupture a tendon. Um, and But what's also interesting is that around about 40% of professional cyclists get runner's knee as well. So there's something to do with the biomechanics of the quads uh, in the knee in a sort of flex position. Also, any athlete that does jumping or bending of the knees, squats or plyometrics where they're sort of using the muscles dynamically, uh, sort of bending the knee. So... So generally that group of patients, um, athletes, but also it can happen in, in people uh, that are just sort of sedentary sitting, um, people that have imbalances in the muscles. So I thought what we do now is just explore some of those uh, trigger points together. So let's look at some of those trigger points. Um, and what we're gonna do is look at the muscles and the pain maps. Um, I think we'll start with the glutes, uh, gluteus maximus. So the gluteus maximus muscle, um, we're just going to remove the underpants here. It's got three uh, sort of main pain maps, the upper, the middle, and the lower. And you can see the glute max um, runs down and inserts actually into the posterior part of the iliotibial band, although some people consider it actually a knee extensor muscle as well. So while we're there, let's look at the iliotibial band. So let's find tensor fascia lata. Um, actually, let's just change the, the background of the screen so it's a bit clearer for you because the, the fascia lata is a very thick myofascial band and the TFL uh, sits anteriorly to it. As I said before, the glute maximus comes behind, inserts in here, and they both have a, an effect on dynamic stability, really, for the, for the valgus to stop sort of knee buckling. So they work together. Um, and what's really important about the TFL is that, or the iliotibial band, is that it can press sometimes uh, on the lateral, the, the vastus lateralis of the quads. Um, so ITB, glute maximus, Let's come in now to the hamstrings. As we know, there are three hamstrings. This is the uh, biceps femoris, and that's got a long and a short head. And the bifem has a very interesting pain map in terms of it goes all the way up into the buttock, whereas the other hamstrings, let's look at the 
other ones tend to cause pain around the back of the knee. So why are we looking for trigger points there? Because there's a reciprocal relationship between the agonist and the antagonist. If you suspect there's a quad trigger points, then you're gonna to wanna to have a look in really at the hamstrings as well, which brings us to the quadriceps. Now, quadriceps is a vast muscle. Um, in terms of pain, we'll start with the rectus fem. Uh, rectus fem trigger points tend to cause pain around the kneecap. So any sort of periarticular knee pain, um, what we want to look at is a trigger point right up here in the top of the thigh, just by the anterior superior iliac spine. Big muscle crosses two uh, joints um, all the way down and inserts uh, into the quadriceps tendon, which goes all the way down to ligamentum patelli and into the patella. So all of these uh, muscles, if they have an imbalance, can cause uh, some kind of tension, uh, pulling and then rubbing at the back of the, the kneecap. So that's the rectus fem. Let's look at uh, semi, uh, let's look at um, vastus medialis. So in terms of vastus medialis, inserts into the medial portion of that tendon, uh, medial part of the patella. And look, this is the kind of pain map we're gonna see for vastus medialis. A vastus lateralis is here. A very extensive uh, pain and that really is a lot to do with runner's knee. So that would be the one that I would look at for sure if I suspected there was a, a runner's knee issue. As I said before, the iliotibial band sits on top of it. Usually there's just a thin line of uh, taut band just as you row over the iliotibial band onto the vastus lateralis. You'll feel a long thin line and that one really is a bull point to really get into that runner's knee there. So, so these are the main muscles, glutes, the hamstrings, the iliotibial band, uh, and the quads. Um, the last one to show you really is popliteus. Now popliteus is, um, is actually a muscle of the lower leg, but I often find it gets involved with a whole range of knee problems. So let me just change the background here. Uh, and the reason is that the popliteus is there to bend the knee, initiates flexion of the knee from a straight leg position. So when you're standing in a straight leg position, uh, which uses very efficient zero energy to, to come out of that and bend the knee, the initiation is from popliteus. So I often find there are trigger points in the popliteus muscle when we have people that come in with a range of knee problems, including runner's knee. So they're the culprits for runner's knee. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, we've got plenty more videos on our Facebook page, on our YouTube page. Really love you to sign up and we, we, we love your questions as well. So keep them coming. Hope you enjoyed that trigger point of the week, runner's knee. Thank you. Thanks for watching.